what up guys all right so i think we have everything that we need for the api the only thing that's left now is to do our testing to see if everything is in order now um i assume you guys have uh postman um um you know postman is fairly easy easy to install i'll leave a link in the description below as to where you can go and download postman you just have to install it you can sign up and create an account with them or just use the or use it without actually uh signing up and stuff um all right so i have postman here ready and then i have my application here ready and then remember in the last video we created our um, our our tables for our database uh, this is what I named it I don't know what you named yours but these are the two tables that we need um, the notes table and the users table currently the users table has nothing in it and then if you go to the notes it also has nothing in it all right now uh, just remember to configure your application to connect to that database by uh, uh, putting in all of these all this uh, data information into your application node properties file so as you can see here this is the connection string the username and password and obviously the driver and then this is the port that we're gonna run our our application on now um, for the user just create I don't know how which um, utility you're using but for the user just create um, just make sure that that user has access to the database this the simplest way to do that for example um, the simplest way to do that is that you can come into MySQL here and then or rather yeah you can come into MySQL here and just type in grant all privileges on and then I'm gonna say my nodes underscore v1 right and then oh sorry underscore v1 dot dot star and then just say two and then put in your name here so my name is uh, my username is Jason and then um, at localhost right and then identified by and whatever password you created mine was Jason one two three and that's it you can just run it this way uh, you can just do that running this way I've already done it so it's not gonna matter if I run it again actually but as you can see it works so just make sure your your user has access to the database and then that's pretty much it so let me just run the application and then start with the testing so now if you remember I'm gonna close this now if you remember within our config class or well actually let me open the index so this was the controller we were testing with earlier on um, let me make sure shorten this so this is the controller we were testing earlier on so now we had a test route we had an admin and a dashboard route and then we do have these routes configured well actually we don't we just have one route uh, configured which is this one is going to return the home uh, method which is this one now we removed this one in the previous videos but that's fine it's not a change mesh um, but one two and then three the test the admin and the dashboard route these ones are not included within the request matches where we say permit all so we shouldn't be able to access these these three routes the test the admin and the dashboard right so I'm gonna come here to postman now I have already uh, oh, oh by the way my application is running on port 8007 so what we have to do here is say localhost uh, and then port uh, 8007 so if I say slash over there we should receive a response from the server so let me send and as you can see the status is 200 and then we receive in the home page which is exactly what we have over here now if I go to the test route for example if I say test we should be forbidden from getting there as you can see 404 I mean 403 forbidden even the app slash admin same thing forbidden uh, dashboard same thing should be uh, forbidden which is fine so I think those three routes these three routes should be fine for testing um, at the moment we are able to test the home one right so this one should be 200 okay so now the first thing we need to do 
is basically register which is basically this method over here now um, hopefully we, if we've done everything correctly we should be able to register a user within the database alright so what we need is the first name last name email and password now remember we are getting this as sort of like a get uh, a post request a normal form request it's not like how we're doing it up here when we are authenticating and sending the information as JSON object so in this case we're just gonna no register like it's a normal form so we have to come here in our postman so the first thing I want to do is create a collection let's just create one right um, I want to rename this to let's see let's see let's see rename let's call this my notes uh, let's just say new so that we are differentiated so that you uh, we have a unique name for it and then in here we're just gonna add a request this is gonna be a post request alright we're gonna say localhost obviously 8000 and then this is gonna be let's see uh, register so now remember the first thing we need to do is append this right so let's do this Auth. right and then let's paste that there didn't copy it properly let's paste that there and then just say register All right so now remember we need the name uh, the first name the last name the surname what is it again first name last name email and password all right so let's come here these we're gonna come in the parameter uh, the params um, column and then we're gonna say first name all right first name I'm just gonna say John Doe I'm gonna say John I mean and then I'm gonna say last name then we're gonna say email obviously the email will be john dot do at example dot com password all right the password should be I'm just gonna say password one two three it's not a train smash now bear in mind the columns that we are placing here that we are typing in need to be the same as the ones that the application is expecting which is these ones the, the naming has to be exactly the same otherwise it's just gonna fail all right so if we done it, everything correctly if we run this we should get this message over here saying registration successful so let's see if that's gonna work all right so I'm gonna send this 404 forbidden let's see I'm gonna name this right register and then save it Right. All right. So it says for all three forbidden. Let's see what went wrong here. All right. So somewhere something is not right. So let's see. API v1 auth. Right. API v1 auth register. Okay. So now let's see what we did within our security. So that should be working. I'm not sure why it's not permitting us. let me see let me remove this and then rerun the application so I'm just waiting for it to stop then I'm gonna rerun it again okay the application is running again so let's see localhost API v1 Okay, it's still refusing. I'm not quite sure what the problem is. So API v1 auth. Okay. API v1 auth. Should be the same. Oh, okay. I can see where the error is. I think then my spelling was off there apologies for that some of you might have noticed that let me just save the request so 
you just have to name the request here and then make sure you save it there if you want to keep it consistent so let's try again let's see if you can register so I'm gonna send it again okay forbidden again there's nothing there right let me put this back as it was save fortunately unfortunately I have to restart the application right so let's run it again okay it's API v1 auth register see if the application is running okay it's still loading okay application is up and running so let's try again still forbidden I don't know why it's doing this okay register password and code Sorry guys, I'm just checking what am I missing here. The spelling should be fine. This also should be fine. Let me just test here again. Okay, nothing's wrong. fine uh, all right let me just pause the video and see where I went wrong then we'll come back and check it again one moment for me please all right guys so that took longer than anticipated all right so I found where the issue was so the reason we were getting this 403 forbidden error is because um, by mistake, I forgot to add this CSRF uh, uh, to disable the CSRF um, within our Spring Security for the Chain method. So because this is being sent as a form, um, Spring Security was expecting the CSRF token. And because we were not providing it within our application, um, it was basically um, um, what you call it not allowing us to go through so I was doing some testing now when I had paused the when I, when I had paused the video so if I show you now um, sorry um, if I run the application with the CSRF token or rather let me do this I'm gonna comment it out right and then save so I'm gonna run the application and then you will see shortly I'm gonna try and submit this form it's not gonna store anything within the database I commented um, that particular um, all of the processes out so the only thing we should receive is the registration success uh, message after we post our form so for now it's not going to store anything um, I just commented out but we will check now shortly so you will see now um, I'm going to try and run this as it is uh, just I just basically submitted a, a, a placed all of the I kept all of the columns that we need and then I'm just putting test 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 just to submit something to the application and then just wait for it to come uh, to 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 for the application to start up, and then from there on we will test and see if it works or not. Okay, so the application is now up and running. So again, when I submit this, we should get a 403 forbidden. 
alright so I'm gonna stop the application again just to show you and then basically uncomment this section here so yeah um, just make sure you add this field and then add this particular parameter within there because that's the latest one even if you don't add it and if you do it the original way where you would have to add like a add disabled uh, method to the end of that it will still work even though it's gonna underline it it's not necessarily an error it's just deprecated it's just a deprecated uh, caution but just do it the way I'm currently doing it now just add this particular parameter abstract HTTP configurer and then dot uh, semicolon semicolon disable alright so let's run the application again so now it should allow us when we try and submit this data so like I said all I did within the auth controller within our registration uh, method I commented out all the stuff where we have to install I mean load or s store the users information in the database we will uncomment that now shortly and then um, and then proceed with the registration part hopefully that works and we don't need to waste any more time doing other things alright so it's still up and running oh sorry it's still uh, what you call it loading okay the application is up and running now so let's say let's send and then whoa forbidden why is that uh, this should work now oh okay my mistake I put in the I forgot to put in the um, let's see I need to get this one so I'm just gonna or let me rather let me just change this to post and then send it so now we get a 201 created so the API VI auth register route should be working now so as you can see um, the issue was that I didn't um, I didn't disable the CSRF uh, token requirement all right so now I have to stop it again and then uncomment all of our information within the registration Okay, so yeah, we should hash the, the password, store the user within the database if the result is successful. If it's not successful, it's supposed to give us this error here. Otherwise, if it is, it should create the user. Right, gonna run it again, pause the video, then we're gonna test when it comes back. One moment for me, please. Okay, the application is up and running. Let's go and test and see if we can register a user. Alright, I'm gonna change these. Um, actually let me do this I'm gonna copy this whole route and I'm gonna paste it within here so this is the route that I created and saved so now I just have to say uh, change that back to John and we're gonna say the surname is Doe and the email should be John dot Doe at example dot com and then the password is gonna be password one two three alright so hopefully we can store this user within the database so let's send so it says the registration successful so it looks like it created the user so now let's test and see if the user is actually within the database so if you come here alright so we successfully created the user within our database alright so I think we should also proceed with, the, with trying to see if we can actually log in and if our API will return the um, what you call it the what you call it the the token and the users information so if you remember within our our login method basically processing the the user information and then from there on it should return a token the 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 the, the access token and the users details and if you remember in here we returning what the user ID username first name last name that's it we don't really need everything or anything else the most important one obviously is the token itself so let's just proceed with testing and seeing if we can actually log in all right so let's come in here let's change this route to login Alright, so remember now we are expecting a JSON object 
within our we close that within our auth controller in the login route we are expecting a, a JSON object so the, the one thing we need to provide is the username and email or the email and password so let's go here and then what we're gonna do within here is uh, we're gonna say body and then we're gonna say raw change that to JSON and then let's open curly braces there and then obviously we're expecting an email right uh, I think we need to put that in quotes and then the email obviously is gonna be this one here uh, let me copy that and I want to paste it in here and then the password as well right and obviously the password was password one two three there's one thing I need to check I don't know if we did the right thing here but the password didn't hash so what did I do wrong here What did I do wrong here? Sorry. Oh, okay. So by mistake, instead of putting hash, I put the 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 the, the password here. All right, that's my fault. Um, let me stop the application and rerun it again. So um, obviously that user is not gonna work because Spring Security is gonna expect a hashed password, or it's gonna expect a password that's in the database is supposed to be hashed so if we try and authenticate using that it's not gonna work but it's fine we will test and I'll show you uh, what it's actually gonna do so that means we have to now create a different user all right so while the application is running let me just actually save this um, I'm gonna name this login all right and then save just give that a second all right so it's saved as login so where's the body oh that's the body so I'll show you now with this that it's not gonna work because the password is not hashed so it's probably gonna throw an exception so now that means we can add we can just register a new user we're gonna say Jane Doe and then we just change that to Jane right let's just see so the application is running so by mistake I put in this password instead of the hash password so let's register that Jane Doe user right we're gonna send that okay registration successful and then let's refresh so as you can see this time around it did hash the password so that means we won't be able to use this user but it's fine we can register any other users after that but let's test and see if you can log in <laughs> using uh, this password because since the password is not hashed it's not gonna work so if I send you're gonna get a forbidden and I'm pretty sure on this side encoded password does not look like a bcrypt so as you can see it didn't work simply because the password was not hashed alright so now let us try to log in with chain though so all you have to do is just change that to chain and then if you say password one two three send right so as you can see our login uh, is working at the moment that's the the token that we're receiving we're getting the user ID the email of the user chain and that's pr pretty much it so now remember we had particular routes that we for example uh, that we have within our index the test the admin and the dashboard right so um, the home one we should receive we should be able to access without authenticating so if I come in here and then I'm gonna change I'm just gonna select that and then change it to nothing but and leave nothing but the forward slash if we enter nope that's wrong right and then if you say send it's a get request we're gonna get home page but if I say test it says there forbidden if I say app slash dashboard uh, like that over there if I say send it doesn't go through either so now what we need to do is um, we 
need to say bearer token so all we have to do now because we have this token here returned to us due to the user logging in we can say we can copy that and let's see, let's see if by pasting it in here will it allow us to now access the dashboard route so if I say send so now we see we get the dashboard page simply because we submitted or we applied uh, we, we placed in our CSRF sorry our access token our JWT access token 200 okay if I also go to uh, remember we have um, we also have admin and test if I come back here let's say admin send we get the admin page if I remove that and say test test send we get that hello from test controller so as you can see our registration is working our login is working I'm gonna save all of this here and then I'm gonna also save the registration as well uh, sorry I don't know why it's saying forbidden thankfully it did that so I know why it's doing this because we're trying to register with the same email address and remember it's unique so it should have show, thrown a, an exception um, we should see it here duplicate entry as you can see there so at least there is our application is working all right so I wanted to save this information here all right so I think we're pretty much done with the API there's nothing else that we need to add um, we don't need to save this there's nothing else we need to add we can log in right we can get the access token we can get the users information remember this we're getting because um, within our response uh, we're getting the user details and then basically um, we're getting the user ID username first name and uh, like we did in the last video and then that's basically what we're returning here when we have successfully authenticated let's just see again what happens if I then submit something uh, the incorrect password so if I send it's obviously not gonna allow us because the um, let's see what the error is so this time around the error was user service obviously that's failing okay that's the duplicate entry let me clear the console right so that we can see what the error will be so forbidden if you come back here okay it's not actually posting any information but the reason we're not getting anything is because the here within the auth remember it's authenticating here and because we're implement we're, we're inputting the incorrect username and password it doesn't allow us to actually go through but then if we remove it um, if we remove it and send the correct username and password we get the token and then we get the user details back now what you need to know is that the application is not storing the um, the token anyway so every time you keep logging in it keeps sending a different user or what you call it a different token every time it's not storing it anyway like in the database or something like that that's why it doesn't even conflict or anything like that so but if you do put in the incorrect username and password it just doesn't do anything the only thing that we can do is maybe send a response back uh, but uh, but that we will do within the app itself so um, I think that's it guys uh, the video is already long enough um, we're practically done with the API I don't think there's anything else that we need to add or oh, actually there's one more thing let's let's do this um, the one the one other thing I forgot to show guys apologies for that um, is this extract um, extract uh, user ID from token we did this method uh, uh, I think in a previous video um, so let's create one note at least right let's try that so let's quickly create um, a note controller class okay um, and then we're gonna say at rest controller right and then in here we're gonna create one particular method hold on 
one second. So I want to create a create um at post mapping, and then this one will be create, All right? For a slash create. And then we're gonna say public uh, response body or response entity create note. All right, and then from here. You gonna say at param uh, request param, right? And then uh, what is this going to be? This is gonna be the title, and then we're gonna say string title request param, um, and then this is gonna be the body. That's basically all we're gonna need. Let me put this on a different line. then we also need the HTTP servlet request this one we're gonna say request you'll see in a moment why we need this actually let's actually proceed to go and doing it so let's say so remember every user has to create when they create a note it has to be linked to their user ID so now I'm gonna say integer right and then this is going to equal to user ID and then it's gonna equal to Oh yeah, I need to auto wire this and bring it at the top and then I'm going to say private and then remember we call it extract ID from token, extract ID from token, okay, and then here we just have to say extract user ID from token, okay, and then, then we're going to say dot get user ID from token, then we need to put in request, so that's all we have to do, so remember within this method here we just pass in this and then within this method this is where we extract the user ID right so we receiving it here then we proceed to extract the authorization token and then proceed to uh, set the user ID if the user ID exists okay now let's proceed to say if Uh, let me stop the application while we're at it so user id if it's equal to null there's no need in proceeding from here if it is then we're gonna say return uh, new response uh, entity then we'll just say something went wrong okay and then from here on we're gonna say http status dot bad request all right all right otherwise uh, end of check user ID uh, if block okay so from here we're gonna say int right um, sorry create note so here we're gonna say int result will equal to all right so here we're gonna need to create the repository so let's let me minimize this cancel so let's say int repository so remember we created this in the previous video so let's do this so we're gonna say int create note all right and then this should take in um, before we add that let's add the query so add query right and then value uh, insert into notes okay then we're gonna need the user ID uh, the title and then the body right so remember that's how 
we have it here so the user id title body all these other ones will auto create by themselves okay um, let's get back to the repository and then we are gonna say here values and then our placeholders will be user id and then title body and then here we're just gonna say native query equals true and then remember we need to add two more annotations it's add transactional and then add modify all right so now let's go and say at param uh, user user id and then this is going to be the integer say add param uh, this should be title and then the last one uh, body okay I think that should be it and then let's go to the service so node service here we're gonna say public uh, integer uh, create notes so let's say integer user id uh, title and then string body okay and here we say return um, note repository dot create notes and then we're gonna we're gonna choose those three and save it there All right, let's come back to the note controller class so here we're gonna say oh at the top here we need to bring it in at auto wired uh, Node service, node service, create notes, and then obviously we're gonna say user ID uh, title body. Okay, and then from here. We're gonna say if result uh, not equal to one. We're gonna do the same thing here. Here we'll just say failed to create note. All right. Okay, and then. Um, what else do we need otherwise yeah from here we can just return um, uh, we can say notes created successfully all right so remember now if you check here we have no notes if I go back into my database if you check we have no notes so Jane Doe is gonna create a note now and then we're gonna send this token as our bearer token then it's gonna be extracted and then the username that's in here is going to be um, used to get the the ID with the of the user which it's supposed to be two as you can see here and then from there on it will link we will when we store the when we store the uh, the note itself as you can see uh, over here we're getting the, the ID here we're extracting it from the token 
and then if it's not null it will proceed to what am I doing it will proceed to create the node otherwise if it is null it's just gonna uh, break the application is just gonna stop here all right so we're gonna create a node title um, and stuff and then if everything is fine uh, we should get this message over here sorry this needs to be created apologies all right um, let's quickly try and do that I'm gonna run the application when it comes back we're gonna uh, when it's done uh, when it's up and running we're gonna just test one moment for me please okay our application is up and running so now um, all right one more wha made a mistake again so I want to name the route so the route is going to be API v1 and then note so let's come here and say add request mapping so we're gonna say API v1 and then notes or should I say notes all right so it, this is going to be our route now so I'm gonna copy that let's run the application in the meantime let's go to postman and then let's just change this route here right so we're gonna say pay, we're gonna paste that and then we're gonna say slash create all right and then it's gonna be a post request let's change I wanna na rename this I'm gonna say save I'm gonna call it create note all right and then save all right so So now what we need to see, we, do, we need to say body and then we're going to say raw, JSON and then let's create a JSON object. So remember we are expecting title. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, another mistake. Um, oh actually, no, it's not a mistake. All right so we don't have to do that we have to add the parameters here so we're gonna say title and then here we'll just say uh, a new note from from chain uh, the body is going to be uh, just a simple note right to create all right let me rerun that application all right so now we're just going to create a note we have none at the moment so Jane should be able to create their first note and then we should see the user's ID here otherwise if we didn't do anything correctly it should fail the application is running let's come back to postman hopefully if everything is in order we should be able to create this node so I'm gonna send it okay node created successfully all right so you might wonder why did it go through if I come to the authorization here by default because in the previous one when we w the previously when we tested we copied the token that we had here luckily we still have it it does it hasn't expired yet that is why at the moment we are able to still send the same one and then um, here because we pasted it here previously when we were testing um, it was able to create the node so let's quickly check so if I refresh here we have a node created by Jane and as you can see we were able to successfully extract um, the, uh, we were able to extract the user ID from that method that we created so if I were to come back here, right, I'm gonna copy and cut this out. And then I'm gonna come back here, right. Um, let's just say, let's call the note um, uh, 
start uh, let's just call it gym plan or yeah let's call it um, create new workout workout plan let's just use that right so remember I removed the token I'm gonna try and now create this node I'm gonna send it as you can see it doesn't allow us and if you come here there shouldn't be another note here so let's see so as you can see we still have that once that same note and then because we didn't provide the, the the application didn't allow us to create anything any resource so I'm gonna paste it back and then I'm gonna try again to create this note so if I send it now we have 201 created then we should have a new note within here as you can see that's our note so all right again apologies guys um i was um that was that took longer than anticipated um i'm, I'm basically free flowing here i don't actually script out my videos so again but apologies for that so now we can create notes our method extract user id from token is working um, because we're taking the author we're getting the authorization header that's being sent and then we are extracting it uh, from the, the request header and then we are able to retrieve the user's ID f uh, from the database and now we are uh, assigning it here to this integer so now when we create nodes we will always be able to um, uh, edit or link it to the note that the user is creating all right so I think that should be fine for now um, when from here on we're going to start working on the mobile app all right the rest of the routes that we're going to use within the notes we will create um uh, once we basically somewhere in between when we are creating the mobile app um again which is going to be in android so we will create the rest of the, the rest of the routes then i don't want this video to take too long already it's long enough so i think i should end it here all right guys so i think that's it so again guys Thank you again for your patience. Um, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you guys within the next video. Uh, thanks again for watching. Cheers for now.